Hello, it's Tom Millichamp here from Edgewords. And today we're just going to be looking at how we can take a SpecFlow project, BDD SpecFlow project, using Selenium WebDriver in Visual Studio, and how we can upload that to Azure DevOps, to a Git repository in Azure DevOps and create a pipeline job to execute our spec flow tests. So we're going to be using Visual Studio, Azure DevOps, and we will also be running this on a, an agent, which is going to be the same machine. It's going to be the laptop that I'm presenting this from. OK, so we are creating a simple or have created a simple .NET Core project. So from the file menu, new, new project. And I have actually just created an end unit test project, which is a .NET Core project. So you could either use the end unit test project if you're using SpecFlow with end unit, or you could simply create a .NET Core console app and then add your necessary NuGet packages. So I've already created this project. It's not under source control at the moment. So this is just a local project. And if we look over on the right hand side, we've got a couple of folders, one for features, for our feature files, and one for the step bindings. We've created a single feature, Google search feature in this case. So here is the feature file. And as you can see, we have a single scenario, page search, which is just going to open up a browser, go to Google, search for Edgewords in this case, and validate that Edgewords appears on the first page of the Google results. So we've created a feature file and we have also created the step bindings behind those steps from the scenario. And here we're using Selenium WebDriver. So a .NET Core project using SpecFlow, <clears throat> we've got a single feature and we've created the step bindings already for that. Now, before we look at adding this to source control and pushing it up to an Azure DevOps project, there are a couple of things we need to talk about in here. First of all, the dependencies. So if we have a look at the NuGet packages that have been installed in this project, most of them pretty straightforward. We're using SpecFlow. So we have the SpecFlow libraries. We have the Selenium libraries, Selenium WebDriver, Selenium support. And we've also got the Chrome driver and also the Firefox driver. So we've got our Selenium libraries, we've got our SpecFlow. We're using NUnit, so we've got our NUnit libraries as well, NUnit itself and the NUnit 3 test adapter. Now there are a couple of other NuGet packages when you're using .NET Core and you're going to be executing this through Azure DevOps on agent machines that you should be aware of. So the first one is this one. So this has been installed as well which is the microsoft.testplatform.test host. So this NuGet package actually installs the necessary libraries, libraries and executables for using VS test on agent machines. So if we actually want to run our tests as we do, execute our spec flow tests on a remote machine, and that remote machine hasn't got Visual Studio installed, then this library is required. And this will install all the necessary files that we need to be able to execute tests without Visual Studio on those agent machines. The other one we've got, because we are using SpecFlow 3 and .NET Core, is the specflow.tools.ms build generation library. So a couple of extra libraries that you need to be aware of there. And there are all of our NuGet packages. The only other thing that's slightly different with this, because it's a .NET Core um, project, is that when you uh, publish a .NET Core project, even though we've got the NuGet libraries for Firefox and 
Chrome drivers, they won't be published to the output directory. So to do that, if I select the project in the Solution Explorer, right click, and I edit the CS proj file. So if we open the project file, there are a couple of extra attributes we've added here. So here's the first one. Under the property group section, publish Chrome driver, and we've set that value to true. So that will copy the Chrome driver.exe to our output directory when we build and publish this project. If you're using Firefox, we can do a similar thing with Firefox, and we can see that down here. So in here, we're including the gecko driver.exe, and we're going to copy that to the publish directory. So there's a couple of extra things for .NET Core projects that we need to do um, to make sure that we've got our drivers, our web browser drivers copied to the output directory. Okay, so we can just build and run this locally from Visual Studio to ensure that this is all working. <clears throat> so there we go, opens Chrome, searches for Edgewords, validates that Edgewords is displayed in the results and closes the browser. Okay, so that is working fine. So we're gonna add this to source control. So I'm just gonna select the entire solution over in the Solution Explorer, right click, and I'm gonna add this solution to source control. <clears throat> we'll give that a moment. Okay, so that commit has taken place. We're now in source control. So if I go into here, we can see we've got the Git files. This is where the project is currently. So we're now under source control, under Git, in a local repository on this machine. Now, what we want to do is we want a remote Git repository in Azure DevOps, which is where we want to push this project to. And we also want to create a build job there. So we're going to move to Azure DevOps. And as opposed to using the Microsoft Azure DevOps hosted agents to run this on, I'm going to run this on my local machine. So I need to provide a connection between my local machine, my agent, and Azure DevOps in the cloud. So right at the top level in Azure DevOps, if we go into the organization settings and we click on agent pools, in here we have the cloud hosted Azure uh, agents, and then we have a, a default agent pool. And in here, I've already set up the agent. So all you need to do to set up an agent to run your tests on is click on new agent. You need to download the agent, which is just a zip file and unzip it somewhere. And then you need to configure the agent just by running the config.cmd. And that'll take you through a number of questions that you need to answer to set up the configuration. And once that's done, we can run the agent. So there's detailed instructions on this page. Um, so it's very straightforward to set up. If I just go into my file explorer, you can see I've actually downloaded the agent and unzipped it in this location. I've already run the config to set up the configuration for my agent. And here's the run command. So if I just run the agent, this will then set up the connectivity between this local machine and Azure DevOps in the cloud. We can see it's now listening for jobs to run on. So we can just minimize that. So just setting up an agent for this to run on, you can see this is now online, so I can run jobs on that machine from Azure DevOps. Okay, so let's create a new project and give this a name. I'm going to select private 
At the moment, it doesn't really matter what it is. I'm just going to use a basic project, so you can choose whether it's Kanban, uh, Basic, Scrum, etc. So let's just create that new project. So we're now in the project where we have our storyboards, repositories, pipelines, test plans, etc. So let's go to the repos, our repositories. So these are just built-in Git repositories within our Azure DevOps project. And if we just copy the URL for this remote repository, and we swap back to Visual Studio, remember our Visual Studio project is under local source control, local Git repository. So if I just go to the Team Explorer, select Sync to sync to an external repository. And if I scroll down to Push to Remote Repository, Publish Git Repo, I can then paste in that URL to Azure DevOps and click Publish. I'm not using any branches for this demo, literally just using the master branch just to keep it simple. So if I go back now, it says the push was successful. So if we go back to Azure DevOps into my project in the repository section, you can now see that we have pushed our project from Visual Studio from the local machine up to Azure DevOps to this project in the cloud. Okay, so now let's build a pipeline to execute these spec flow tests. So let's click on pipelines. Let's create a new pipeline. And we can either do this using uh, YAML or we can use the classic editor. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna click the link to use the classic editor and we'll do it point and click. So first of all, where is the code coming from? Well, this is from our repository and we're going to take this from the Azure repos uh, repository, which is where we've just pushed it to. So within this project, so we can choose the project and the repository and the branch. As I say, I'm just using the master branch at the moment for this demo and click continue. Then we can choose a template. So remember, this is a .NET Core, ASP.NET Core. Okay, now we can change this around a little bit. <clears throat> you can see at the moment that this has a number of steps in it. It's gonna do a, a NuGet restore, then a build, then a test, then a publish, and then a publish artifact. So for this pipeline, if I click on the top, we can already see that the first section we've already answered, which is where the source files are coming from, which is in the repository. Okay, so the, for the first part of this, if we look at the pipeline, we've got the pipeline name. Let's just change this to something like execute specflow tests. And we can say where the agent pool is. So in here, we can either use the, the hosted, Microsoft hosted Azure um, agents, or we can just go to default and I can use the agent pool, which has my local laptop added into it. If we click on get sources, this is where the source code is coming from, which is our repository, which we've already told it from the Azure repository, which we can see down here from the master branch. So this is gonna run on an agent. So this is the first agent job here. So let's just change the name of that to make it obvious. So, the agent pool, we can either define here or we can just inherit from the pipeline itself. So you can see if I select here, we can always select the pool from here and any agents that we require. Okay, and the steps from this template, are, as I mentioned before, restore, build, test, publish, and publish artifact. I'm going to remove the test step for now. because I want to ensure that these steps work first, um, and then I'm gonna use VS test to actually execute the tests and publish the results. And I'm gonna do that as a, a final step. So the restore step is going to restore 
the NuGet packages any dependencies and it's just going to use the csproj file um, to do that so that's fine then once we've restored those packages we're going to build our project based on the csproj file again no problem with this the only thing i'm going to add is in the arguments i'm just going to tell it that we don't need to do a restore because the build will automatically do a restore in .NET Core. But as we have that as a separate step, we don't need to do that again. And I'd rather have them as separate steps in case something goes wrong and then we can identify the problem. Once we've built the, the project, we can publish the project. And again, for publish, publish will do a build by default and we've already done the build step, so we don't need to do the build step. So we can add a no build switch onto here as well. Now there's something to be careful, uh, to be wary of here, <coughs> and that is when it's using um, these environment variables for file paths, if you've got a space, so if I go to where this is going to be executed, which is on the agent machine, here's the agent that we talked about earlier. If you've got any spaces within the file path, which I have, in this instance, then you may get some errors because the file paths will need to be surrounded by double quotes because they have spaces in them. So if you get any errors that say something like couldn't build, couldn't publish um, more than one project, so it thinks there's more than one project, it's probably because there's spaces in the file path. So you can see I've actually just put some quotes because I've I've already identified this problem at this this uh, <coughs> uh, this stage. So I'm just putting some quotes around the, the output file path. Now, this is not a web project. We just use this as a template so we can uncheck publish web projects. We can uncheck zipping the publish project and also adding the project name to the publish path. We don't need that either. So we can uncheck those options. All we want to do is publish our project once it's built. Okay, and then the final uh, final step is just going to publish the artifacts. So the output, all the compiled files that are created, um, we are going to publish those and we're going to store those in Azure DevOps. So they could be reused later for other pipelines if required. So let's just click a save and queue. And we're going to just click save and run. We should actually see in here running job. So the agents picked up that there is a job it's being passed to my local machine. So the checkout is successful. It's checked out the code from the repository, our project, restored any dependencies. It's now building the project, publishing the project. Okay, so we can see that all of those steps were successful, that build was successful. If I click on the artifacts link at the top, and then we can see the output. So in here we can see our files, there's the Chrome driver, here's our Gecko driver, here's the actual published DLL, so the compiled specflow project. All of our output files are shown in the artifacts. So we now know that the build is working successfully. If I go back to the build, and I click on edit. So we're actually pulling the code from our Git repository, building the project, publishing the project, but we're not actually executing the tests yet. So to do that, we're going to add a step. And in here, we're going to search for VS test, Visual Studio test, and we're going to add that as a step. Okay, so let's change the name to that to run tests. And down here, the test files that it's looking for in here 
anything beginning or ending with test, where we're going to change that because we know the name of this. this is the name of the project. If you remember from the artifacts or the project name, um, as we saw it in Visual Studio. So if I go back to Visual Studio, this project is com.edgewords.sfazure. So that's going to be the name of the compiled project, the, the final DLL. So we can specify the DLL name. We're going to ignore anything that's test adapt DLL, anything in the object folder. OK, and that's all we need for now. We'll come back to some of the other options in there. So we've now added a step that is going to execute the test. This is using VS, Microsoft's VS test. VS test will actually identify N unit tests, MS test, um, X unit tests. Uh, so a number of different formats, it'll identify those tests and execute them. And this step will also produce the results, publish the results for us. So let's save that and execute it. So it's checked out the code. To in our NuGet restore. Building the project. Publishing the project. OK, and now it's running our tests. Okay, so you can see there Chrome has been invoked. If I swap to it, we can watch that happen. Searching for edge words. So it's running our tests. Publishing the results and finally completing the job. Okay, so all of our steps have been successful. If we click on tests, then we can see our results. So one test was executed. 100% pass rate. If we want to filter this down at the bottom, we can just click on here and say, show us any pass tests. So here's the pass test. Here's our page search. So we get the log here, any error messages, which we don't have. And then the actual test itself that was executed page search in this case. Okay, so there are a couple of other things just to mention at this point. First of all, we can filter which tests are going to be executed in SpecFlow, as you are more than likely aware, by using tags. So we can use tags at the feature level or at our scenario level. And we can use these to filter which tests are going to be executed. And this can be done in our build job. So if I go to edit and we edit the build and we click on the VS test step, the test that actually runs the tests, we have a test filter criteria option. So for SpecFlow, all we need to do in here is put test category equals, and then the tags, <coughs> which can be delimited, whichever tags you want to be executed. So this is how we filter the tests that are going to be executed. Very simple. The other thing we might want to do is execute this on different browsers. So if we click on the variables tab in here, we can add a, a variable such as browser. And we can specify at runtime or use the default value here, which browser we want to use. So let's change this to Firefox. And again, we can just save that. Now to explain how the environment variables are used, so we've got this custom variable we've added to the pipeline. If we go back to Visual Studio, just to show you how that is picked up, if I click on the steps and I move to the top here, let's just move this over a little bit. There we go. 
So here is where I pick up that environment variable. So Azure DevOps automatically passes that environment variable through to the project. And if we look here, we use environment.getEnvironment variable, the name of the uh, variable, in this case, browser, and I've just stored that in a variable, and then we're just switching. So if it's Chrome, if it's Firefox, uh, if no value is passed, the default is Chrome using Chrome driver. The other thing that you'll notice here is Chrome driver. I'm actually specifying where to use Chrome driver from, which is the actual output directory. So where the assembly lives as opposed to putting a file path or no path. So you can use environment variables, very easy to pick up those. They're passed through automatically from Azure DevOps. The other thing we can do is set the triggers then. So if we want this pipeline to be executed every time there is a, a new um, commit to our repository, then we can do that very simply by clicking on the triggers tab for our, our pipeline and enabling continuous integration. Again, we could save that. So now if I go back to Visual Studio, and I make a change. Save that. And we'll commit that locally. Click on sync. And I shall push that new commit, that local commit, up to Azure DevOps. Then if we go to our pipelines, we can see that that has actually just kicked off the pipeline itself. And if I click on it, you can see that that is now going to execute. This time it should use Firefox because we've specified the browser using the environment variable. Okay, and it's now running the tests against Firefox. Um, you won't see anything in this because I've actually specified Firefox as headless um, in my VS project. Oh, no, I didn't. There it is. <laughs> so as you saw, that ran against Firefox. The build has finished and we can see the tests have passed. So that was kicked off automatically by the fact that I did a, a, another commit to our project repository. So hopefully that gives you an idea on how you can set up a relatively simple pipeline job to pull your spec flow test project from an Azure DevOps repository, build it, publish it, run the tests, publish the results, and that we can kick that off automatically. It also showed you there that you can filter using the test categories. You can turn on continuous integration to make it happen automatically every time there's a new commit. And also the fact that we can use variables as well. So we can pass values from Azure DevOps from our build job through to our SpecFlow project. Thank you very much for watching.